Welcome and good afternoon. My name is Kamish Orr, and welcome back to something I like to call Stories from the Maelstrom, a recap of the day's games for this past week of real time. Once again, we had some interesting games today, um, even though the uh, World Series pennant races are... Well, one's decided and the other one is almost decided. But let's, uh, let's just see uh, see what happened this week. Uh, let's start in Oakland as the Detroit Rockets were facing the Oakland Jacks. Detroit with a three-and-a-half game lead over Boston in the American League still have not clinched the American League pennant. But they are relentless in this one. Um, they scored two runs in the first with Alex Rodriguez's first home run of the game, a two-run shot there in the first inning. And uh, that was against Jim Cott, who has been pretty good uh, this season, actually, for Oakland. Um, he's facing off against David Cohn for the Detroit Rockets. Now, Oakland responded with two runs of their own in the bottom of the first. Uh, Derek Jeter and Reggie Jackson with back-to-back -back doubles there, back-to-back uh, -back RBI doubles. And Jeter is actually was two for five. I'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, needless to say, in the third inning, Detroit scored two more runs thanks to an error there um, in the third inning by Rod Carew that allowed that second run to score. However, Oakland had some hope in the bottom of the third when they scored four runs in response. There was a two-run double from George Brett and a two-run homer by Tris Speaker. It was uh, his first home run of the season. Not really known as a home run hitter, but he got all of that one. And so that put Oakland up four, or excuse me, six to four at that point. But Detroit came back in the fifth, scoring two runs of their own. Uh, Charlie Blackwell actually let off with a triple, and then Jim Cott balked home Charlie Blackwell Alex Rodriguez followed with his second home run of the game a solo shot and that tied things up six to six so we turned over to the relievers here in the later innings in fact uh, the score was still tied six to six so we headed to the 10th inning when Ted Lyons came in to pitch for the Oakland Jacks and he did not do well Alex Rodriguez singled the lead off the inning. And then Mini Minoso actually bobbled one, uh, dropped, dropped one there in left field. And Mark McGuire followed that with a three-run homer to put Detroit up 9-6. to six. They'd actually score a couple more runs, uh, one of them unearned, another unearned run later in the inning. And so uh, they... Took this one 11 to 6. Oakland was uh, put down three up, three down in the 10th. And so Detroit takes this one 11 to 6. They improved to 31 and 19. And Oakland falls to 21 and 28. An important win for Detroit. Every win gets them closer to clinching. And uh, this put them up four games, I believe, on Boston at this point. I mentioned Derek Jeter. And if we see here, Jeter went two for five. And he's actually batting 533. Now, why is that? Well, because Robin Yount has been the primary starter for Oakland. And Yount is doing so well that Jeter has not gotten much playing time. Uh, we have Joe DiMaggio actually as the DH. So uh, Jeter hasn't gotten much playing time. However, the playing time he has gotten, he's made the most of. And so he is batting 533 in limited limited action. Um, so very interesting there. Dan Quisenberry actually picked up the win in this one in, in extra innings. With he uh, Quisenberry has an ERA of 177, one of the best relievers in the league. Of course, Detroit's offense has been very very great uh, here uh, throughout the season and especially in the second half. So they take this one, uh, and they will. Uh, they wait to see what happens to uh, in uh, the Boston game. 
So we'll get to that here in a second. Next, we head over to Houston, the Astrodome, for the last game of the four-game series between the Chicago Docks and the Houston Hoots, two teams who are out of it. But there's still some interesting story there to look at. Uh, Jerry Kuzman taking the mound for the Chicago Docks against Bob Gibson for the Houston Hoots, the team's namesake. And Houston actually takes this one pretty easily with two three-run innings in the fourth and the fifth against Kuzman. Uh, Chicago did have a few runs there, but Gibson, for the most part, uh, kept them in check, allowed seven hits. He did walk six, but he struck out seven as well. And Chicago drops this one there, 18 and 32, the worst team in the entire league. Uh, Houston improves to 24 and 26. They're almost to 500 here. In fact, with with LA's losing streak, they're within striking distance of of uh, catching LA in the National League. Interesting though, uh, we're talking about players here. Albert Pujols, who joined the team midseason. Um, he was four for five in this game to raise his average of 358. Um, I don't think he has quite enough plate appearances to qualify for the batting title. Maybe he'll get there by the end of the season or with the last four games of the season. Because at this point, that 358 would put him right in the running for the batting title in the National or the American League, for that matter, if he were in the American League, but uh, definitely here in the National League. Heading over to New York, and I talked about Boston, waiting to see what happened in the Boston game. We see that Boston took this one. Bob Lemon actually on the mound for the New York Swats, facing off against Catfish Hunter for the Boston Splinters. Both pitchers were stellar. Hunter allowed just four hits and one earned run in his eight innings of work. That run came in the fourth inning here when uh, Griffey was on first with a single. And Harold Baines doubled him home for their only run there in the fourth inning. But Bob Lemon was also, uh, also had a great start. Uh, Bob Lemon, actually known for his uh, control issues earlier in the season, and he only allowed two walks in this game in his eight and a third inning. Unfortunately for him, they came back to back here with runners on first and second. So uh, Ricky Henderson actually walked in, uh, walked to, you can't really say drove in a run, but he walked in uh, Cal Ripken Jr. here who had reached base from a hit by pitch. So a little wildness from Lemon there in the fifth inning, but that was pretty much it. He took a three hit, uh, Three hitter actually um, into the ninth, but then uh, after getting Ted Williams to pop out, Frank Thomas singled and Lou Gehrig hit a two run homer to uh, break the tie and to put Boston up three to one. And that's where things would stay. Uh, Raleigh Fingers came in the bottom of the ninth. Things did get interesting when Alan Trammell was hit by a pitch by Raleigh Fingers, stole second. Then uh, Fingers walked Babe Ruth, so men on first and second with no outs, but then Ken Griffey Jr. flew out to right, and Jimmy Fox and Harold Baines struck out to end the game. So Boston takes this one 3-1 to one to get back to three and a half games behind Detroit with, uh, actually, Boston has five games left to play. Detroit only has four, and they're three and a half back, so they'll still need... They'll still need some miraculous stuff to happen here to have a shot. Finally, we had to St. Louis as the LA Dynamos face off against the St. Louis Wizards. St. Louis already has the NL pennant wrapped up. However, they're still fighting for uh, maintaining the home field advantage here. LA carrying an eight game losing streak into this one. However, finally, after this long drought, L.A. comes out on top. Greg Maddox on the mound for the Dynamos, facing off against Robin Roberts for the Wizards. And L.A. scored three runs in the third, thanks to an Eddie Matthews two-run homer and a Johnny Mize solo shot. 
Uh, meanwhile, Maddox was keeping the Wizards hitters pretty much in check. He did allow a couple of runs, uh, an earned run or an unearned run in the second, uh, and, and then a run in the fifth and a run in the seventh, thanks to a sack fly that actually made the game four to three at that point. They would get uh, an. L.A. would get an insurance run off, off of uh, Fergie Jenkins here in the eighth inning to make it 5-3. to three. And then Trevor Hoffman had a perfect eighth inning and Goose Gossage with a perfect ninth striking out the side here uh, to pick up his tenth save. Robin Roberts gets the loss in this one. He drops to 3-6. and six. In fact, he's lost his last six um, decisions, I believe. Let's just uh, look at the story here. Yeah, he. So they snap the losing streak. LA snaps that losing streak to get back to 500. They're 25 and 25. St. Louis is 33 and 17. So they still have a two game lead over Detroit for home field advantage. Um, of course, Boston still has a shot to top Detroit, but that window is closing. And then uh, Robin Roberts with the um, with the loss here. He's lost six straight decisions dating back to April 21st. So he's ha he's had a rough time after having a, a pretty uh, pretty great start to the season. He's he's had a rough time and may lose his spot in the rotation come the postseason. We'll have to just wait and see how that pans out. So if we look at the standings here, we see. Detroit, three and a half game lead over Boston. Detroit's won five straight games. That's help, helped with that. Um, and they're just two games behind St. Louis for home field advantage in the World Series. So um, keeping that in mind, here's what the schedule looks like coming up. So we're on the 27th here. We had a rain makeup game here between Boston and Oakland. So they'll actually have a five game series to close out the season. Uh, other teams have an off day here, uh, and then they head to the final four-game series of the year. While Boston is playing Oakland, New York will be at Detroit, L.A. will be at Houston, and St. Louis will be facing last place Chicago. So both the top team in the American and the top team in the National League facing off against the last place team. Uh, so it will be interesting to see as that fight for home field advantage shapes up here in the uh, rest of the season. Now let's take a look at some stats. Uh, Ted Williams kind of been slumping lately. In fact, slumping enough to give Ichiro the lead for the batting title in the, in the American League here. Ichiro has a, is batting 355 to Ted Williams 347. In the National League, Tony Gwynn, 345, leading the National League in batting. Of course, Ted Williams still uh, leading on base percentage by a, by a comfortable margin, but not slugging anymore. Dick Allen has actually topped him, uh, Allen with a 650 slugging percentage. And if we look at home runs here, Stan Musial still in the lead with 16. Um, next place in the National League is Eddie Matthews with 13. Ted Williams tied with Alex Rodriguez and Adrian Beltre there in the American League for home run lead with all of them with 13 homers. So, it's definitely some interesting things to be watching here as the season wraps up. And uh, so stay tuned. We'll only have a couple more of these shows before the World Series between St. Louis, and whoever comes out on top in the American League. As always, you can head over to BaseballMailstrom.com to follow the action. And if you like this kind of information or these kinds of videos, be sure to click the like button. Consider subscribing. I do have another project in mind after this one wraps up here. Probably have another month or so of this one uh, to wrap this one up. And I have another project. Um, I definitely uh, am enjoying Payoff Pitch and plan to do something else with payoff pitch. And then I think I'm adding another uh, another uh, game to the mix uh, for another project as well. So uh, stay tuned for that. 
With all that said, thank you so much for coming by and watching. And until next time, have a great evening.